happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. Now, what the girl was saying was not evil, was not wrong. I mean, in fact, what she was saying was even true. But it was not by the Spirit of God. It was by another spirit. You might recall that in 1 Corinthians 12, when it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, that it says you cannot see Jesus, say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Well, we know that there have been people who are evil that say Jesus is Lord, but it doesn't mean the same thing. You got to know the spirit. You got to know the purpose. You got to know the intent. There have been people that have tried to do a lot of good things, but the motive and intent of their heart was wrong. Have you ever had somebody come to you and say, "Here, you know, take this hundred dollar bill and you know, go ahead and take care of, pick up whatever you need, and and we'll take care of you later." Two hundred dollars later, and you're in the hole. You're still wondering when are they going to take care of the other hundred dollars? But they keep talking about that hundred dollars they gave. <coughs> they did a good thing in the beginning, but they keep trying to reap the benefits from what they sowed into you just to put, you, put a hook in you to get you to do something they wanted to do for their own purpose. People can have good intentions, but we need the discernment, which we'll go into in one of the other lessons, but you need to have the discernment to know what is the motive and the intent of a person. In this, Paul recognized that this woman had a spirit of divination. The story of placing um, an ad in the paper comes to mind when I think about this verse of scripture. There was a time in 1993 that I was so impressed or so pressed by the Lord to do something. You know, he kept telling me, how long must I endure the silence of my prophets? You know, there haven't been much said about prophets in the house of God because most of the things that you do here are negative. And, um, you know, every time somebody says even the word prophet, most people have a neon light go off in their mind. False, 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 you know. Well, if there's false prophets, which there are, there's got to be true ones somewhere. Or they would all be bad. And uh, the Lord kept pressing me to do something. Step out, you know. Put yourself on the line. Well, every time I go to the grocery store, I see these magazines, you know, where it's have sitting there on the counter, Buffalo Baby or, you know, some premonition or, you know, the tabloids. And so I'd pick them up and I'd look at them and I'd see all oh, these big old huge ads for psychics and crystal ball gazers and astrologists and tarot card readers. And, and the Lord just impressed me, put an ad in there. Well, I called them up. They reach 15 million people, by the way, every week. And I thought, well, that's a pretty good congregation to try to reach. But when I checked on it, the smallest ad they had was $486 one time. Well, I don't know how those psychics were paying for those big old 8 inch by 8 inch ads uh, but $486 was a whole lot of money at the time and it still is today if you're going to run an ad for one time but anyway we put an ad in there and my uncle fronted the, the cost of it he's an evangelist he thought it was a great idea let's go for it and so we put that ad in for uh, people to write in for a prophecy tape which we've been sending out prophecy tapes for years and we had 110 people respond and of course we had their personal word on their tape, but we also had a message on there that talked about how I was able to be able to find this information out about them, only by having their name and address. And, of course, then in the end, it would reveal Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's not, alive. he's not dead, he's alive, and he's speaking to the church by his Holy Spirit. Well, we had three people come to the Lord out of that 110. One of them was an agnostic, and this is 93. Every year on June 19th, she writes, sends us a letter and lets us know that she's still teaching Sunday school in the church. On fire for the Lord. 